in the Robert Lehman collection at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and one of the most wonderful places to see art in New York. One can imagine oneself as a collector. Well, it's a, it is a kind of representation of his domestic environment where he put his painting collection. That's right. And we're standing in front of one of the real masterpieces in New York and certainly of this collection by Jean-Auguste Dominique Angre. And it's a painting that's called The Princess de Broglie, and it dates to about 1853. It's very late for Angre. It is. It's, in fact, I think it's his last society portrait. Mm -hmm. And it's one of his most important and one of his most beautiful, I think. When I look at this, I feel like it's almost impossible to believe that this was made by hand in the era of Photoshop. First of all, you can't see any brushwork. It, there's a total perfection to the surface. So let's take a look. Okay. Um, one of the most striking aspects of the painting for my eyes, is that cool, icy blue dress. The textures of the satin are so brilliantly rendered that you get this sense that I could almost hear it as the cloth pulls against itself. Or if she were to move and walk, we could hear what that sounds like and as it, it rustled. Oh, and it almost feels like she is moving a little bit. She's amazingly alive. What I think Ang is up to, to some extent, is contrasting the clarity and precision of that cloth against the softness of the skin, which has a kind of indeterminance. In a very characteristic Ang way, there's something a little bit funny about the body and something a little bit funny about the way that the flesh is modeled. If you look at her left forearm, there should be more modeling there to indicate the arm's three-dimensionality. And there's no and there's, musculature. Right, there's no musculature. There's no sense of bone. No definition. And muscle, right. Yeah. At first, when you look at the painting, there's no sense of this. But when you start to really look more closely, there's something dislocated about the upper part of the arm from the forearm. And, and from the very shoulder, kind yes. of, And from the shoulder, something very elongated about the wrist. And even though Ang is so amazing in terms of uh, he's being a, a master craftsman, of anatomy, right, yes. he's really decided to take some liberties here in the pursuit, perhaps, of some sort of ideal of perfection and beauty. So that's interesting. That body doesn't have to be in any other position. So he can actually idealize this particular position by very deftly and very subtly transforming her skeletal structure, really. Mm -hmm. Look at the length of the neck, for instance, right? I mean, it's just a little bit longer than one would expect. Her face is beautiful, but her eyes are just a little larger than we would expect. And she gazes out with a kind of intensity, a kind of forlorn poetic quality that speaks to her aristocratic position because she doesn't look at us, I don't think. I think she almost looks past us. Or maybe a little down at us. Perhaps, perhaps even that, <laughs> yeah.